Hey, hi viewers. Um, just before I start this review, I just want to say that I am not here to talk about microtransactions, loot boxes. I'm only here to talk about Shadow of War and its quality as a game, how it goes by its own merits. Okay, we good? All right, cue the intro. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mr. Clockwork Apple. A few months ago I reviewed Shadow of Mordor, ending my review by mentioning the upcoming sequel. Well, Shadow of War is out now, so let's just see how good it is, shall we? So in the first game, we are introduced to Talion, that's our main man in the centre here. A ranger from the Black Gate. And we saw him get attached to this spooky ghost elf guy who had amnesia and well anyone who's played the first game knows roughly how this goes. As the game continued we found out that this ghost guy was none other than Celebrimbor, the guy who started this whole ring business in the first place and pretty much caused all the trouble that happens in The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings entirely by accident. He wasn't to know but oh well. And the game ended with Talion and Celebrimbor basically agreeing to forge a brand new ring to try and take on Sauron. This game opens up with the new ring being forged, causing a magical blast that separates Ranger from Wraith, and after a brief tutorial we find out that Celebrimbor has been trapped in Shelob's web. That's the giant spider who I know only from the movies, and apparently she can turn into a woman for some reason. It's never fully explained, but apparently she can transform so she can talk to us and we trade the new ring for the Wraith and basically spend the first part of the game trying to get it back. Confused yet? I know I am. During the game's opening stages, before we manage to get the ring back, we come across a siege into the city of Minas Ethel, which I have never heard of before. I've only read part of the book, but I've never even heard of it, so I assume that's important as it's being overrun by orcs and ring wraiths and other kinds of monsters and baddies and it's this invasion that sort of kicks off the plot of the game which the rest of is kind of spoilers so basically the point main point is we've got the new ring that's what we're after here and to be honest the plot isn't the reason you're here for this game anyway so for the most part, the gameplay of Shadow of War can be summed up as the gameplay of Shadow of Mordor turned up to about 11-ish. Controls are more responsive, you have more abilities to use, you can now pick and choose from all kinds of different equipments to basically add to your stats, make yourself more powerful, and help you out in certain situations. There's equipment that makes your fire attack stronger, there's equipment that helps you when you're using poison, there's ones for stealth, ones for archery. It all kind of adds together, letting you build your own personal playstyle for how you feel you want to approach the game. But most importantly, is the return of the, the Nemesis, Nemesis system, system, which is bigger and better than before. I loved the Nemesis system in this game, and now it is back in this one, and it is so much better. For those of you who don't know, the Nemesis system is basically what this game's main selling point. Enemy orcs fall into two groups. Ordinary grunts, which are your rank and file, kill them by the hundreds, standard video game enemies, you hit them a few times and they die. And then there's captains. Captains are randomly generated with their own unique names and appearances and abilities and titles and their own strengths and weaknesses that make each one entirely unique for every player. They're serving as your main challenge throughout this game and the thing you're going to be fighting most of. If a regular enemy manages to kill you, they get promoted to becoming a captain and will basically take their place on the world map, wandering around, doing missions and becoming stronger as you leave them alone. If you, they manage to beat you again, which they can and will, especially if you're playing on Nemesis difficulty, the hardest mode, which of course I'm playing on because why would I not want to challenge myself at this game, they become even stronger, making it harder for you to beat them next time. They see your enemies keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger. If you leave them alone, you really need to kill them quickly if you want to stand a chance. Or you can leave them for longer and get some better equipment and gear out of them when you finally manage to kill an opponent. Having that one orc who has caused you so much trouble throughout the game, keeps killing you, keeps invading you, when you finally take him down, it feels so good trying to finally beat that guy. 
that one you really, really hate to fight. Once you hit the second part of the game, you unlock the Brand ability. Once you have Brand, you can win Orcs over to your side and have them fight alongside you or send them off on their own missions to attack other Orcs and become stronger and act as your allies. All of this is roughly the same as the first game, but new to this game is the loyalty stat. If you manage to help an orc on a mission, save their life, let them do things they like doing, kill their rival, recruit their blood brother, it will increase the loyalty of the orc, and basically a loyal orc will save you from difficult situations. If you're about to get killed, they'll turn up and save your life. They'll help you in combat much more, and sometimes even if they fall in battle they can come back to life to keep fighting alongside you. It is so good seeing your favourite orc come back to life to keep fighting alongside you. It really makes them feel like you know, they're your friends, they're not just a tool to be used, these orcs are your friends. But on the other hand, letting them fail missions, ki recruiting their rival, killing their blood brother can result in an orc betraying you. An orc that betrays you will rejoin Sauron's forces, gain a power boost, and basically cause all kinds of issues with you because they'll keep turning up over and over again to make your day worse and worse. Nothing makes me feel more betrayed than being in the middle of a huge battle and having one of my favourite orcs suddenly turn round and tell me, you know, I'm leaving you, I'm rejoining the bad guys, and now I'm going to kill you. You know, I'm coming for you, because you didn't, you didn't do stuff that I liked. Yeah, or orcs are kind of fickle like that. Enemy orcs can also ambush you when you least expect it, forcing you into a fight you weren't prepared for, or turning up in a fight that already exists to make life harder. Basically, the orcs are so much fun, there's so many things they can do in the world that makes them just very interesting compared to most video game enemies. They feel like actual living, breathing characters in a way. Like in the first game, Shadow of War focuses mainly on Talion and Celebrimbor. You can kind of see them in the middle here, fused together like that. And it follows them throughout their quest to essentially take down the Dark Lord. And more importantly, we sort of watch them as they slowly work their way down the slippery slope of questionable morality. As their actions fall further and further into the grey zone between being a hero and being a villain. Or at least that's how Talion does things. Celebrimbor, on the other hand, our ghostly wraith buddy, well, he's not so much staring into the abyss as much as he's abseiling down it. You know, even at the start of the game, it's clear that this ghost guy has gone completely off the deep end, is really starting to show his evil side, and I absolutely love that. So aside from our <coughs> heroes, we have plenty of other characters to meet and greet, such as Shelob, who I mentioned earlier, the giant spider who steals the new ring. There's Idril and Baranor, who are two human soldiers trying to reclaim the city of Minas Ethel after the orcs take over it. There's Bruce the Chopper, who's this enormous great war troll who teaches you the ins and outs of the new updated Nemesis system. There's my personal favourite, Karnan, who's this insane nature spirit who turns into different beasts and monsters that fill Mordor. There's just plenty of characters to go around and they're all... I don't think there's any character I actually disliked at the end of the game. There's a few that I didn't quite like when they were first introduced, but they kind of grew on me as time went on. And of course, like the first game, we have the orcs. How can I not mention more orcs? That's what this game is about. It's about orcs. And they're just as crazy and fun to be around as ever before. Every orc captain has their own unique personality, with their own special dialogue for pretty much any situation they can find themselves in, ranging from being in a duel to being ambushed, to going on a beast hunt. And not only that, but they also comment on what the player is doing at the time when you engage them in battle. But probably the most important part of this, as it says here on the back of the box, nothing will be forgotten. Orcs remember what you did last time you met them. If you beat them, they'll mention it. If they beat you, they'll mention it. If you ran away, if you're riding a caragor, if you burned them, frozen, poisoned them, threw them off a cliff, they remember what you did to them. And you start building up a sort of history with the orcs. Having You have this one orc that keeps coming back to life over and over again to haunt you, or one that keeps beating you over and over and over again, you start really building a kind of relationship with them almost. Having your favourite 
followers who keep saving your life, having your worst nemesis who just won't go away and die. It's, it's just great. I cannot overstate how much I love the nemesis system in this game. It's probably one of my favourite mechanics of any video game ever. So as you can probably imagine, Shadow of War is a downright amazing game. I have nothing but praise for this game. Everything I loved about Shadow of War is even better in Shadow of Wardor, and the few complaints I had about this one have all been fixed in this one. If I had to complain about something just for the sake of argument, it would be that the first act of the game is kind of too fast and too slow at the same time. There's a lot of information thrown at you, and it's pretty overwhelming, but it still took me about five hours to reach act two of the game. At which point I lost track of time because I was too busy killing orcs and having fun to pay attention to anything else. Once you hit act two of this game, it really opens up, so... Yeah, you have to put in the five hours to get past act one, but it is worth it. As I mentioned earlier, if you've played Shadow of Mordor and liked it, then you will love Shadow of War. It has quickly become one of my favourite PS4 games, and probably one of my favourite games, period. I mean, out of all the games I have ever played, this has got to be up top 10 at least. Okay, so as literally the entire internet will tell you, this game has something of a controversy with it, with the microtransactions. Um, I just want to say that this part of my video is completely unscripted. I haven't written anything to say about this, this is just my personal opinions about the whole microtransactions issue. Obviously, I'm not a fan of microtransactions, I think they really can become a problem in games, especially you, know, you see stories of people spending thousands and thousands of pounds in a game for basically no reason because they become addicted to it, or because games get released that you need basically either need to buy them to win or you can cheat by buying things. And when this game announced it was going to have them, a lot of people really got angry about this, a single player game having microtransactions and loot boxes. It caused a, quite the uproar. Literally go on any video on YouTube, you'll see people complaining about this game having them. And people were saying you should, you know, they were going to boycott Shadow of War. And well, I've played the game beginning to end. I just want to say I haven't spent a single penny on this game aside from, you know, buying it here. You know, the microtransactions are 100% optional. They're ignorable. And even if you do go in for them, there's nothing special you can get just from them. Everything to be earned from microtransactions and loot boxes you can earn by playing the game. So no we should not be boycotting Shadow of War because let's face it microtransactions they're here to stay we're not going to get rid of them anytime soon because you know the publishers want more money. It's basically the reason they're in this game is because publishers messing with things. I think we should be praising this game for doing microtransactions right by making them absolutely ignorable. I know they shouldn't be there to begin with, but they're here, we're stuck with them. We can't, I personally can't do anything about it, so I might as well just make the best of it. They really are a non-issue. There's nothing to hate about this game, really. And I know I'm probably going to get someone commenting saying that I've been bribed by Warner Brothers to say that. Um, Guys, I get like six views a week, what would be the point in bribing me, let's be honest here. So if you're worried about microtransactions being an issue, don't be. This game is absolutely amazing one way or another. You can ignore the microtransactions entirely. Just if this game has any, if you're interested in this game at all, don't worry, just get it already. Do yourself a favour and just get it already. So. With that ugly issue done, I have been Mr. Clockwork Apple, goodbye.